Act one, scene, the playground. One out of nine girls is sexually assaulted or abused by an adult. I was five years old. I loved doing flips off the jungle gym. I loved climbing high up in trees. I loved taking my Barbies in their Barbie airplane around the world to different countries that one day I would go visit. In other words, I liked to be up high. One day at the playground at school, I decided, by golly, I'm going to go down the big slide. There was only one challenge. The big slide was guarded by a horde of sixth grade boys twice my size. I strode over to the slide. I went through the group of boys, and I started to make my way up what seemed a very tall ladder. About halfway, one of the boys climbed, pinned me to the ladder, and assaulted me. I quickly scampered to the top of the slide, went down the slide, and immediately ran to two teachers that were in the middle of a conversation. And, like a polite girl, I stood and waited my turn to be called on to speak. The teachers didn't call on me, so I went to the swing set and started to play by myself. An older girl did come up to check on me. Within a couple of years, I don't know how they managed to do it. it this was in the 70s, mind you. But my parents got me into a school that had computers. And you can bet your bottom dollar that every day I was stoking my passion for technology. What did I learn? Sometimes the system that set up to support you fails. So you have to navigate around and listen for your advocates and allies. Scene two, setting, manufacturing plant. I was in college, so around age 20. Between trimesters, I worked full time. This particular assignment was at the local vehicle manufacturing plant. I was hired to do repetitive clerical tasks. The hiring manager specifically said to just keep your head down, stay quiet. In retrospect, I think it was because she wanted to listen to her Rush Limbaugh show for eight hours every day that I was there. One day, around closing to 5 p.m., one of the managers that I recognized but had never worked with came into the office area and said, Chris, I'd like to see you when your shift ends. I thought it was a little odd, uh, but 5 o'clock came around. Hoot, hoot, it's a manufacturing plant. Everyone cleared out. A lot of the lights go down. It's winter time. It's dark outside. I made my way across the assembly floor alone to the office. I walked in, and the manager said, I would like you to accompany me to an event tonight. Mind you, this was before cell phones. No one was going to come to my aid. I thought quickly, and I responded, looking at his left hand, I think you should take your wife to the event. I'm contracted to work in the office until 5 p.m. The only other thing that I remember from that conversation is that he called me a whore. Another part of that assignment, I happened to be in the front office, and the IT director comes clamoring in exclaiming that there was a problem with the distributor caps on the vehicles, it was, there was a perforation, that they had to shut down 
the assembly line to track, but they couldn't track it because the database was down. So against my hiring manager, who wanted me to keep my nose to the grindstone, against the manager who wanted to distract me from why I was hired, I inserted myself into the conversation and I said, I'd like to take a crack at that. The IT director said, by all means, come on back. And guess what? I fixed that database. The assembly line was up and running again. What did I learn? That sometimes you have to insert yourself into the opportunity. Act three, scene, the graphic design department. About one, excuse me, about 15% of engineers are women. I was around age 30. I was doing what we now would call UI, UX design work, and I really wanted to be a front-end engineer. So I was racking up those certifications, learning those coding languages. I was, I even built and coded an edutainment game that won an award for team building. I was selected for the in-house incubation design team. Things were looking really good because I had the checklist for promotion. It's very straightforward. Learn this tech, do a certain percent of your work, on this tech and turn in your, your checklist. So come annual review, I strode into the office ex fully expecting that I was going to be promoted because I had documented that I had earned it. I was denied. Not only that, a man who didn't know any of the tech that I did was promoted. I gave my two weeks notice. <laughs> I went and started my own company and I really felt like I was able to spread my wings and do even more of my talents. What did I learn? That sometimes if you're not promoted, you need to promote yourself. Act four, scene, Fortune 500 company. One of my clients actually had made me an offer that I couldn't refuse and I uh, converted to, to full-time as, as an employee with them. And my purview was primarily business development, but I do love innovation. So I actually built the very first data mart for my department, along with some other uh, performance awards and a really good track record in my work. I caught the attention of the other side of the firm, which was the revenue generating side of the business. And one day, there was an announcement uh, within our department that a, a marquee client, a Fortune 100 client, was at risk. And my name had come up to rescue it. Alongside 50 of the best and brightest minds internationally, across different services and geographies, and over 300 people on the account team. It's a lot of livelihoods at stake. After I said yes to that, the company also internally announced, hey, by the way, the past few years we've been working in secret on this proprietary business intelligence stack. We're ready to take it to market. All existing accounts must migrate. All new accounts must deploy. Here's some talking head videos so that you can learn how it works. By the way, Benevich, you'll be the first. And initially, I was uh, a bit taken aback. This was way out of, of scope of why I was hired. On the other hand, I thought this is a multi-million dollar, multi-year opportunity that the firm has put in my lap and said, make this work. So again, alongside a very talented, professional, and smart team, we were able to retain that business and expand it as a matter of fact, the following year, I was no longer at the firm, and I'll get to that in a moment. 
the annual revenue, also known as year over year, had increased by 100%. So I knew, in addition to the rest of my track record, that I had really delivered above and beyond at my very short tenure at this firm of around four and a half years. What I haven't told you is that I did come up for promotion on the officer's track two times. And both times, there was always an excuse. I wasn't granted it. But I had put so much blood, sweat, and tears into this job. Look at what I had accomplished. There's no denying it. I, I really wanted to, to get that promotion. What I learned is that sometimes I'm the one holding me back. Act five, scene, Austin, Texas, the pandemic. Approximately 42% of women experience discrimination because of their gender at work. I was closing in on 50 years old. And I thought, you know what? Now is the time I'm gonna go full throttle. I've always had this interest in artificial intelligence and I've always wanted to go into the performing arts, I'm going to go for it. So I went to none other than the University of Texas at Arlington and earned a data science certification through boot camp. I appeared in films and television shows alongside actors that you would know. And I realized, what did I learn? that the more authentic I am, the more of me that I express, the more I'm able to manifest my dreams. In closing, I hope nobody goes through what I did. But if you do, I hope that you can take the five stories and solutions that I've shared with you. I hope that you can benefit from the decades where I've been the only woman in the room and can go on an even bigger and better trajectory than I did. I hope that should you find yourself in a position of power, that you become an ally. There are a heck of a lot of people out there that need your advocacy. We are in a time where everyone, regardless of profession or, or vocation is touched by technology. And as humans, we all are creative in our own way. So whether you are in STEAM or you are simply immersed in the technology of today and your own creativity, I hope that you can join me in creating a more equitable, delightful world for all of us because it's really gonna take all our effort and all our care. Thank you.